Greetings, this is Principal Kefele, and welcome to another edition of Message to the Youth. You know, we're in the midst of Black History Month, uh, February 2021, and recently I made a video called Five Black Inventors That You Should Know, and I decided that I wanted to give you another five. So I'm calling this one Five More Black Inventors That You Should Know. And let me, let me tell you where I'm getting these inventors from. This very old book, and you can tell by looking at it, it's very old. It, you know, books don't even look like this anymore. But a very old book called Black Inventors of America. It was published in 1969, written by McKinley Burt Jr. I got my hands on it in 1985. My mother gave it to me as a gift. And I was blown away when I saw it because, you know, so many... There's so many inventions by black people over the years, and some of them even came during, were, were, were invented during the enslavement period. And all these inventions that were coming about, the people who were inventing them, black people at that time, were not getting credit for their inventions. So the assumption was that others invented them outside of the black community, in this case, primarily white inventors. But after years later in, in, in research and study, we discovered that there's a whole lot of inventions out here that were invented by black people. So what this great book does, it, it lets you know what these inventions are, but it also gives you the patent information. Because see, the thing about an invention, you cannot pat you cannot invent anything have it invent you, you cannot get recognition for an invention it can't be officially called an invention unless it has a patent and in order to get a patent you got to go through a process right with government and you get a patent number so it's got it's got to have a blueprint it's got to be designed um, in terms of the blueprint and then ultimately you get a patent well this book has the patents it has the patent numbers and the blueprints for many of these inventions to prove for anyone that did this in disbelief about these various different inventions that were invented by African-American people. So for this video, I want to highlight five, five black inventors, again, during the month of uh, February, Black History Month 2021. The first one will be Richard Spikes, Richard B. Spikes. And, you know, his invention is one that you probably see every day, even though you're young, you ride in, a, in, a, in an automobile, perhaps with your parents or others, your guardian, whomever. But there's something in that automobile called the transmission. And that's that's what shifts the gears. That's how, how, how you go from drive to reverse, neutral, park, etc. Well, before Richard's, Richard B. Spike's invention, the driver had to manually shift the gears. So you'd have to be, it's a coordination between what's called the clutch that you use with your foot and then your hand on the transmission on the stick shift. And you've got to coordinate this thing to be able to shift from first gear to second gear to third gear. And that takes time to learn. It's a process. Some people, they, they take a long time to learn it and some just get frustrated and don't learn it. So what Richard B. Spikes came up with was the automatic transmission which meant that you just take your car from park and shift it into reverse and drive. Then shift it into drive and drive. You don't have to worry about this coordination between foot and hand, shifting gears from first gear to second gear to third gear, etc. Now you just put it in gear, meaning in drive, and just drive on. And the car will automatically shift gears without you having to worry about doing that. Well, that invention... That came out of the mind of Richard B. Spikes, an African-American inventor. So I want you to know that name and I want you to know that invention. Richard B. Spikes, automatic transmission or automatic gear shifting of a car. But he also invented the turn signal to let the people behind you and in front of you know that you're turning left or right. He didn't come up with the first one, but he, but, but he improved upon the first one, which was used by several different companies as the turn signal that they installed into the cars that they manufactured. So the turn signal, and then here's another big one by the same inventor, the automatic car wash. So think about the, you know, when you wash a car, it takes some time. 
right? And, and particularly if your car is dirty and you live somewhere where the climate is cold, such as where I am in New Jersey. Last thing I want to do is on a cold winter 20 degree day is be outside washing the car. Well, he invented the automatic car wash where you just drive your car to the entrance and then it, the, the, the belt underneath catches the wheels of the car and just takes it on through, washes it, rinses it. And on the other side of the car wash, your car is there dry because it dries it as well. And then you jump in your car, pay the, pay the, uh, the people the price of the car wash and you drive on. As Richard B. Spikes, he in, in this, you know, I could spend a whole video just talking about his inventions, but I wanted to highlight those three. Second, Jan Matzeliger. My second African-American inventor today, Jan Matzeliger. Now, when I say Jan, it's actually spelled J-A-N, so it looks like Jan, but it's Jan, the pronunciation. And he invented what was called the shoe lasting machine. And, and, I want, and, and most of these are back in the 1800s, I might add. So think about a shoe. You look at a shoe, you, you, in a lot of cases, you'll see some stitching between the leather part of the shoe and the sole, the bottom of the shoe. Well, people used to hand stitch, in terms of manufacturing shoes, hand stitch the sole, the top of the shoe, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the, the shoe, the top of the shoe to the sole of the shoe. So they would hand stitch it. That, that took time. That's very tedious. So he came up with a machine called the shoe lasting machine that attached the upper portion of the shoe to the bottom portion, the sole of the shoe, automatically through a machine. That cut down on time. And now more can be produced. Because, you know, when you're talking about hand stitching a shoe, that's a lot of time and you can't produce a lot of shoes in, 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 in that period of time because it's, it's, it's just too much work involved. So the machine was able to do the work and now they could mass produce, meaning producing a, a lot of shoes in a short period of time. So that's, that's Jan Matzeliger. Next, Garrett Morgan. I'm sure many of you heard of Garrett Morgan. Garrett Morgan is credited with the traffic light by way of the first tra automatic traffic signal. So in other words, there would be like a sign that was attached to a pole and it would say stop. And then when it was time to go, it would drop down and another sign would appear and it would say go. So the automatic traffic signal was Garrett Morgan's invention, which eventually morphed into the traffic light that you all see every day, wherever you go. It's Garrett Morgan. But in addition to Garrett Morgan, he invented the gas mask, right? So when people go into places that, that, that may have gas or other toxic fumes and chemicals in, within the, the, the environment, the air, and they put on a gas mask to protect them, that's a Garrett Morgan invention, right? Garrett Morgan invention. So that's my third African-American, Garrett Morgan. Uh, next, number four, Norbert Rillo, right? It's a French name, Norbert Rillo, R-I-L-L-I-E-U-X, Rillo. And Norbert Rillo, you know, you think about sugar. We all, you know, well, I don't really eat sugar these days, but I did. But sugar, you know, these little fine particles, that's what it is, these little fine sweet particles. Well, it comes from what's called sugar cane. And it's got to be converted from the cane, this this solid, this 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 solid um, material or 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 thing, for lack of a better word, um, solid substance would be a better word for it. So this solid substance that has to be converted into the fine particles of sugar that people use on cereal and and other food and coffee, etc. Well, he came up with this evaporation system. And it ultimately became known as the evaporation pan or the Rillo pan. And it, through a process, would convert the sugar cane into fine particles of sugar as you know it now. That's another black inventor, Norbert Rillo, who invented this evaporation, the evaporator pan, which produced sugar as we know it today. And then finally, Benjamin Banneker. Benjamin Banneker, for, he, he did a lot of things. He, he, you know, he was a, he was a, a mathematician. He, 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 he uh, created an almanac that was um, circulated every year. So he, so, he, so he would write a new almanac every year that kind of just let farmers know what the forecast was um, the seas, throughout the seasons of the year so they can determine 
how they go about planting and harvesting, etc. Well, so he did that, but he also created the first clock in America using American parts, right? So the first, the first clock to keep time using American parts, that's Benjamin Banneker. But I think what he's most known for is he was commissioned along with two others by George Washington, first president of the U.S., to literally design Washington, D.C., the city of Washington, D.C., to design it, to lay it out, what the streets would look like. But in addition to that, to determine where various different government buildings would be built. So he determined where the White House would be situated. He determined where the Capitol would be situated. And then in addition, just designing the layout of Washington, D.C. So here we're talking about, okay, this is in the 1700s. So we're, 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 we're talking about, I should say the 1800s, or late 17, early 1800s. We're talking about a man whom saw, envisioned what a city would look like and then went on and laid it out. Right, so I gave you these five more black inventors. What I want you to do, if you didn't see the first video, five black inventors you must know, go back and look at that one as well so that you can have all 10. And then if you can get your hands on this book, Black Inventors of America by McKinley Burt Jr., you can get everything. The, 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 just, just the multiplicity of inventors and the blueprints and the patent numbers. The problem, though, the challenge, though, is getting your hands on this book. It's not easy to obtain. It's out of print, unfortunately. I'm one of the lucky ones that has it. But hopefully somebody will bring it back into print, back into circulation. But with that said, I appreciate you spending a few minutes watching this video, and I hope you got something out of it. Once again, this is Principal Kefele. Thanks for listening. Peace.